Right, as always, it was this video turned into a completely different video. I will be doing another video on a car that's not starting, so we'll kind of see a bit more of the tool. Um, but I just kind of wanted to show you some of the features that was in it. And it's the first time I ever used it. I didn't cut anything out. You can see I'm kind of fumbling with it a little bit. But get used to it. You can see in a lot more of my videos. And yeah, this is just really a quick look at it. And the next video will be more in-depth um, diagnostics on it. Sorted. 2007 RS here. Now I am going to get a screen recorder put on this. I've got a couple of ideas how to do it. We've disconnected the dongle. It's gone into, you can't see it, but it's gone in down there. And the actual OBD2 socket powers the dongle, which is really good. Um, it means you don't have to charge it separately and you can't really forget about it. So we'll just, this is just really kind of going to see the fe features because this guy, he had a problem with this car. He said it spluttered once about three or four days ago and he wants me to have a look at it, but it hasn't done it since. So the car is running too well. It's going to be more or less impossible for me to go through it, but we can just kind of see. Uh, here's the special uh, functions it can do, immobilizers, injectors, DPF, TPMSs, and all the usual stuff. But we can go through some of the data stream on it and see exactly what it can and can't do. Um, now, I haven't used this, so I don't knew... I was hoping to do an automatic scan like the other one did. Uh, where am I looking? Asia. Uh, Toyota. Where's Toyota? Toyota. We'll just get into a few live datas and see, you know, fuel trims and stuff like that. And just see if there's anything that shows up. And then what I am going to do, I'm going to use, I've got a Ford outside which has a problem, a, a no start. So I'm not going to go too mad into this one. We'll just do a no start automatic search. Oh, okay, what's this? Uh, Pakistan, Thailand, Latin America, Brazil. Uh, where's like Europe? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, manual select. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Manual select. Ah. So difficult to do it through the viewfinder. This is why I want to do a screen record on it. All right, let me actually get into the vehicle. Once I get into the vehicle, we'll uh, continue. We will do a health report. And we'll just see what it comes back as. See if, was there any fault stored in it when it kind of spluttered or coughed or anything like that and uh, there is a code in the ABS but I can't really see that cause any problems airbag again that's not going to really cause it to splutter let this finish and we'll see can I press each individual one or should I just go to fault report I'm not sure oh that's me pressing the horn what have we got here so that could have just been uh, I tell you what that was the battery was changed on this so I'd say that's what that was so that's nothing to worry about let's go back out and go into engine can we see any data in there now we know there's no cold in special functions oil reset actuate a test yeah see this is where the more expensive tool now comes into play, so you can see what's on there. If my phone stops going, uh, actually, a test. What can we do? Nice. Look at all the stuff we can do again. I'm not going to go into it um, a lot because I've I've got another car that I need to do the diagnosing on this. I just want to quickly see. Oh, gone out too far. Um, if there's anything that stands out, just can go to data stream. We'll just go select all. Do we select all? Is that selected all? 
just select on the page. Why isn't there a select all? Let me just select all this and see what happens. Again, I've got a lot of stuff open, so it will be slow. But I see we've got a record button, a save data button, a report button. That's really nice. Um, gives us our catalytic temperature. That's really nice. Again, trying to do this through a screen is very, very difficult. Um, misfires, no misfires. Engine speed, no, I didn't mean to go into that. Right, I'm struggling to do this through the phone. What I might do is just, I'm gonna pick more data pids to kind of do with the uh, fuel inside, so short and long terms and stuff like that. Let me get all that ready. Right, okay, so I've kind of got it all on one screen. I got a battery voltage, Catholic temp, uh, coolant temp, fuel um, status that's in closed loop, uh, engine temp as well, and short and long term fuel trims. Now, um they kind of look a little bit i don't know the strategy of this when it changes but when you kind of rev it up and stabilize it it's practically zero um so i wouldn't really worry about that like that and like i said it's running way too well um i'm still getting used to this scan tool we can graph everything it looks like um again let's just what are we on there now Catalyst temp, coolant temp, fuel system. Is this going to be our long and short term fuel trims? Here we go. Maybe there's something here now. Um, it's kind of going down again now. Something to look at though, because that did go up to 10. Well, I might have to do a separate video on this. But it did stabilise for me before. See if we can get the long term to change. I might have to take this for a drive. But again, short term goes back down. Oh, there's maybe something in this now. Will it settle? I'm going to take this for a drive and uh, we'll come back. Taking it for a drive and it's practically zero. Um, nothing really that I'm going to be worried about on the fuel trims. Um, I thought maybe for a second there possibly, but... No, it's practically zero. Um, when you rev it up, especially when you drive, um, practically zero. So I'm not worried about that. We've no code to that anyway. Um, but let's see if we can get it to do something now. There we go. Yeah, look, see, practically zero. Um, uh, I want to get back to the car, but you can see there, look, it's practically zero. Um, I like the way you can go to the values and the graph, and you can seem to graph everything uh, with this tool, not just um, certain things, like obviously with the cheaper tools, which is really nice. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get out on the Mondeo. Hopefully by then, because that's going to be tomorrow, hopefully by then I will um, have some sort of screen recorder on it because it would just be so much easier to use with a screen recorder so much easier for you to see it as well and uh, yeah there's nothing really I can see with this car but I didn't think there would be to be honest but I'm going to go through a few more checks with it and uh, you should see more of this bad boy on the Mondeo sorted what I think I'll do is I'll just do a quick video on this first because and I'll use the Mondeo as a separate video but what I do need to show, oh, there we go. See, I've cable tied it. God, this is beautiful, isn't it?
green recorder be so much simpler now this is still technically a cheap scan tool i think it's around four five hundred quid or f is it between four to six hundred quid i can't remember exactly but technically as scan tools go this is still mega cheap but this obviously compared to the other one just look at the bi-directional controls we've got here um some really cool things you know just to make your life a bit easier let's just do a simple one which is a fan test We can actually oh, stop this phone. We can monitor what we're doing now. Why is this going into here? Hold on. Let's go back out. Ah, it's just doing no monitoring the data. On. There we go lovely this is what makes a really good scan tool bi-directional controls now like everything it is hit and miss but just for this rs look at the stuff we can actually do let's do something else. I'm getting interrupted but like i said this is where your money goes into bi-directional controls so it's telling you what might happen it's telling you if you need to start the engine if you need to be in whatever neutral gear whatever happens to be depending on whatever test you're doing We'll say with no monitoring. <coughs> Please stop twisting, I don't need this. I swear, so much easier if I get a screen recorder on this. So essentially what we're gonna do is just stop the injector. So as soon as I press on, you should see it changed. There we go. See that? It changed. Now you can do that with all your injectors. And you can see if you've got one dodgy one or if one's not doing what it's supposed to do. Not going to go through them all because it's kind of pointless. Um, we can check the VVT system as well. Check the VVT system. We've done the fuel um, injector. I mean, there's just, as you can see, it's just really good. Bidirectional controls can just save you a lot of head scratching and exactly what's wrong or what isn't wrong. So we can do the fuel pump. You can see we can just do a lot more stuff. And that's just in this module alone. That's just in the engine module. Um, if I was to go to the other modules, you know, you can obviously do other things. We can reset the oil light here. And uh, there are special functions um, in this module again. So I'm just going to quick go to another module and see what we can do there. The uh, but main body module. And this is just one of them days. And we'll just go to actuator test and see what we can do here. Well, we can do a simple thing. Of hazards I know that might sound simple but it's amazing if you know the car controls are okay as you can see it's turned them on and then your diagnosis is so much easier depending on what you are doing bi-directional controls are fantastic especially if it has the right control for what you are doing um, door locks what can we do with door locks ignition on this is just going to obviously activate the door locks. I must try it with monitoring on. So we go lock. There we go. You can hear that locking. It's testing them. And unlock. And then off. There we go. So that was actuating them. And again, you know, if one of the door locks didn't lock, you know to go to that motor, check out the motor, check out the wiring. It eliminates things. Um, again, I'm not going to go into all of it because as you can see, there's just way too much in this. Um, special functions, what can it do? Coding and all sorts, as you see, there's just loads and loads of stuff. It'll just take too long to try and go through it all on one vehicle. Um, <clears throat> so the next video is going to be actually it not starting. A Ford Mondeo is not starting, so we can actually see what we can do in there rather than just kind of going and pressing buttons because obviously this car, it's running okay. There's nothing we can really see. So we're going to use that on uh, a Mondeo next, a non-starter, and uh, see how we go from there. But at the minute... I'm loving it. I like the form factor. I like the fact that it fits in your hand. I was kind of thinking that a bigger screen would be nice. Yes, obviously a bigger screen is nice, especially for uh, looking at um, wavy lines and stuff. It's always better. 
for a bigger screen but i have to say um you know for the price of it for what it can do two years updates for free i believe um i'll leave all the links down below so just check it out but as you can see there's a lot of bi-directional controls and that is the key but unfortunately that's what you pay for and i know there's gonna be a lot of people out there say oh it's expensive as scan tools go this is very very cheap you start buying other scan tools and come back to me when it's three times the price just to update it for one year than this is to buy and then you'll know uh, how much scan tools are. So look, hope it helps. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted.